strap yourselves in. We're in for a long one. So full disclosure, though, I did do a practice run of this algorithm just to make sure that it did work and like the colors worked and how I was explaining it worked. And I kind of had a lot of fun with it. Maybe my brain's weird, but hopefully you have fun with this too. This is going to be Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm, and it is pronounced Dijkstra, even though that's a J up there. So uh, basically, we're the, we did two algorithms for traversing graphs, and now we're saying, okay, let's get into some more, like, not just, I don't want to just go to all the nodes. Let's, like, solve a problem, really. And so this is uh, a very common one, the shortest path. If you want to find, you know, the shortest path between, um, like, maybe you're traveling, shortest path between two cities or something, that'll be our example that we use. It's also used a lot in, um, like, network routing protocols or something, right? Like, you know, what's the quickest way, you know, to make this connection? So that's kind of what we're talking about right here. Both of these algorithms, both this video and our next video are going to be specifically for weighted graphs and specifically for solving a problem other than just, can we traverse the graph? Can we explore the graph? We're not so curious anymore about exploring with these two algorithms so much as a specific problem here being the shortest path. So let's get into our setting here. So our setting here is um, World War II. And we've got some troops over that just landed in Bordeaux and they need to get to Strasbourg. Okay. And the question is, of course, what's the quickest way to get there? So here's a simplified map of France, um, circa uh, 1944, I believe. Yes, that's correct. And we're going to be using this as a little exploration example to do our shortest path algorithm. I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you have fun with it. Hopefully it's not super tedious. Um, it's, I think it's very useful to explore it by hand to get a kind of a feel, a gut for how the algorithm works. You don't need to be able to do it by hand to program the algorithm, but to have a kind of gut understanding, like a little friendship with this algorithm and really see how it works and some of the things that can pop up, I think doing it by hand is, is really useful for that. So that's why I'm going to do it. As a reminder, this is a video. You can put this video on fast forward, two times speed, half speed, three quarters speed, etc. So just a reminder that you can do that because this algorithm will take a long time. Okay, basically, uh, let's give a little overview before I, we actually start doing it. The way that it works is, you know, we're going to have a start and an ending node, and we're going to kind of be constantly reevaluating paths. So we just look at all the places, kind of breadth first in a, in a way, but not quite. And we look at the start and say, okay, where are the places that we can go from the start? And then we'll have shortest paths to those places. And we'll, then we'll choose the closest place and find the shortest paths for others. And we might eventually update paths. So, right, eventually we're going to say, oh, we can get to Vichy this way for 450 or this way for 500. Uh, let's if we already had the 500 we'd update it but but that's the that's the gist of it exploring a lot we have these tentative shortest paths and then we just update them and update them until we're done and then when we're done we we'll have the best so let's see what it looks like here's the algorithm dijkstra's shortest path algorithm this is not going to fit on one page though especially if I write this big. So we got our initialization steps. These are not going to be surprising, but you need to choose the start and the end node. We've already done that on our graph. I mark them with stars. We're gonna start at Bordeaux, go to Strasbourg. Next up, you need a, this, this one's a little weird for now, but just stay with me. We're gonna mark a tentative distance I'm going to, um, uh, for the starting node as zero and infinity for all others. And just to, well, let's do it first, right? So I'm going to write starting distances in tentative distances in red. So what this is saying, I'm going to put infinities everywhere else. What this is really saying is, okay, 
currently without having done any exploration what like what's our best like like what's our what's our upper bound on how long it's going to take to get somewhere and we haven't done any exploration so we don't have a good upper bound infinity is our upper bound and of course programmatically right you wouldn't write infinity but you can you know do some very very large number okay and then when we explore an actual path we'll say oh this is less than infinity let's update and use this path and then of course we'll pretty soon get rid of infinity and be able to start comparing actual numbers this is just like initialization if we have a path it'll have a number if we don't have a path it'll be stuck at infinity and that's something that's going to happen too is some nodes right if this weren't a connected graph if we were trying to drive to hawaii and we were not on hawaii right it would not be a connected graph that would stay as infinity there would be no shortest path from bordeaux to hawaii by car okay and let's just do a little notation to make things uh, a little quicker. Let's call these tentative distances D sub I. So I is a subscript, D for distance, and I for like what whatever node it is. That's just going to make these a little bit easier. And just like the last two algorithms, two initialization steps, and then we have a while loop. So while you have unvisited nodes, which we do, we haven't visited any nodes yet. And remember in our previous algorithms, right? I had this hand wavy step and I said, visit the node. Well, now we're actually doing things when we're visiting these nodes. So this is where the fun really begins. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna identify, and again, we do have unvisited nodes. We have not visited any nodes yet. You're going to identify an unvisited node with the smallest tentative distance. So again, I'm abbreviating tentative distance as that D sub I. And we're going to call it our current node. I'm using green here because I am going to color coordinate this as well. Okay. And as a side note, if this di equals infinity, we end the algorithm. If the smallest unvisited node is infinity, we can't get there, basically. <laughs> or we're done. So let's do that. Identify the unvisited node with the smallest di. Look at all these red numbers. Which of these numbers is the smallest? You've got this. Let's say Bordeaux is our current node. It makes sense, right, to your, for your first node to be where you're starting. Or I guess you could think of the, you could start at the last node, but that's not this algorithm. Okay. Anyway, so that's it. All right, that's the whole step. Again, we will be iterating on step three as well. So this next step is pretty long. Let's actually write it on the next page. <laughs> uh, 3B is a bit of a longer step. Um, because it has many, many sub-steps as well. Now we look at each unvisited neighbor. Of this current node. So we have a for loop inside of this while loop. Okay. Not a surprising thing for all of you to see, I'm sure, but it is a little fun. Let's compute the sum. And this is this part's weird. We're going to compute the sum of the current nodes di and the neighbor's distance. So what does that mean? We're going to be adding two numbers together, a distance and the current nodes di. So here um, again, we're going to look at all the neighbors of Bordeaux. The order does not matter. Um, let's just start with Nantes. Okay. I don't know how to say any of these French names, so they're all going to be wrong. I apologize ahead of time. All right. So look at this node. We're going to add two numbers together. We're adding the current nodes DI, the current nodes Bordeaux, 
So we're going to add 0 plus the distance to this next node. So what are we really doing? We're finding the, the, the current path from Bordeaux to this new node. How far is that? That's really what we're doing. So eventually, right, if we were looking at Nantes, we'd be adding 150 with 300. If we are at Paris, we would add 450 with 350, unless there was a faster path, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so we added that number. We got 150. Okay, that was letter I. We did it. We got a number of 150. What do we do with that number? Well, this is more complicated. We compare to the neighbor's DI. Okay, so let's compare it. Is 150 less than infinity or more than infinity? Yeah, it's less than. So if the new one is less than, I forgot how to make a less than sign, the old one, then we do things. If not, we don't. In other words, right, if we've found a new shortest path to this new node, we update it. And if it's longer, we trash it and move on. So this is really a, you know, a programmatic if statement, not a human language if statement of, oh, if you do this, great. Otherwise, do that. It's not an if else. It's just an if statement. So if the new is less than the old, then you update the neighbor's DI and mark an arrow. Ooh, yeah, mark an arrow on the path. And you'll erase any other arrows that go to this neighbor. And again, this is really why we have to do the algorithm, because just looking at the algorithm doesn't make that much sense. Okay, so here's what I mean. So we have this number, 150. Is 150 smaller? Yes, it is. We're going to now update. Now Nantes has a new DI, it has 150. We're going to update that and draw an arrow to it. Okay, and then what we're going to do is uh, erase, like if, if we had, let's say we had another arrow going here to Nantes, we would have erased that arrow. All right, so that's that step. That's the most complicated step, I think. And then we're going to do that for each unvisited neighbor of the current node, and then we'll move on. So let's go through this process with Vichy now, right? That's another unvisited neighboring node. So we're going to add this zero with this 450, and we're going to get 450. That's less than infinity. So we're updating that distance and making a path. That's it. Okay. All right. So that's much quicker once we already know the steps. Let's just keep going. Now we're looking at the last unexplored neighbor of our current node is Toulouse. And again, we're going to do the same thing. Add zero with 200 to get 200. Yep, that's less than infinity. So we update it and we draw a path. And if there were other paths that went to Toulouse, we would have erased them. Okay, so we've, we've done all the neighboring nodes now of the current node. So now we're at the last part of this while loop. We're out of that for loop, but we're back in this while loop. We're going to mark the current as visited. Okay. So mark the current as a visited node now. And I'll be showing that with yellow. So let's go back and say, all right, this is no longer our current node, but it is a node that we have looked at. That's the whole algorithm. Now let's keep doing it. So again, feel free to pause the video, get some practice. I'm gonna walk through the next couple steps I'm not going to do the whole algorithm on the video, but I want to talk through a couple things that are going to pop up and then we'll skip to the end and I'll show the last couple steps after that. But again, 
please pause the video, do it on your own, fast forward, move, make it on, change the speed, do what you need to do. All right, so we mark the current as visited. Let's go to the start of the while loop again. Identify the unvisited node with the smallest di, call it the current node. So what is the unvisited node with the smallest di? That's going to be 150. Nantes has not been visited, right? Visited means that yellow thing in this context. And it has the smallest di, so that's going to be our current node. Let's show that it's the current node. Now we're going to every neighbor, which of which there's only one unvisited neighbor, but we need to go to every unvisited neighbor, because Bordeaux has already been visited. And we're going to add our current di with the distance. So again, right, it's 450 so far to get to Paris. 450 is indeed less than infinity, so we're going to update that arrow. Okay, there's no more unvisited neighbors, so we're done with our for loop, right? Our for loop is for each unvisited neighbor of the current node. We'll compare those things and update if necessary. So that's it. Okay, and now again, we're back to the while loop. We're going to, oh, wait, before we we have to finish the while loop and say, okay, it's no longer our current node. It's now just a visited node. Toulouse is next, right? It has 200. That's the smallest unvisited dis uh, tentative distance. So now it's going to have three unvisited neighbors that we're going to look at. Let's look at each one. First, we need to add 200 with 300 and say, okay, we could also get to Vichy with 500 units, 500 kilometers. But this is longer. So we don't care. We're not updating anything. That's longer, eh, bye-bye. We're not going to Vichy that way. No reason to. So we'll go check Lion now. 200 and 600 is 800. Yep, that's less than infinity. You're welcome. And we got a new path that we're gonna update. We have a new fastest way to get to Lion. That's another way of saying what's happening when we're drawing these arrows a new fastest way to get to Lion. And finally, of course, down there in the bottom, 500 will be less than infinity. So we have a new fastest way to get to Marseille. Great, we're done with Toulouse. So we're gonna update it to say we have visited that node. And now we're going to look at the next unvisited with the smallest DI, the smallest tentative distance. We have two options. It does not matter according to the algorithm which one you do. All right, so I'm just gonna do Paris just because that's how my brain works, but again, it doesn't really matter. Paris is 450, it has two unvisited neighboring nodes. We add 450 and 350 to get 800. And we say, yes, 800 is less than infinity. We have a new fastest way to get to Lyle. Definitely that's the wrong way to pronounce it. And then Vichy, again, we're at 450, we add 350. We can also get here with 800. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna get to, get to Vichy through Paris. We just go directly there. So we don't update that at all. Nothing happens. We've now looked at all the unvisited neighboring nodes. Paris is now visited. Okay, so what's next? Vichy now has the smallest DI, the smallest tentative distance. So I'll visit that node. Look at every unvisited neighboring node. So we're not going to look at Paris. Paris is already visited. We're only looking at Lyle and Lyon. We're not looking at Toulouse either. That's already visited. Okay, so to get to Lyle here, that'd be 850. Yeah, that's bigger. We don't care. To get to Lyon, that's 700. Oh, we do care about that. Right, that's 700 here. So we're going to update this to 700 because we have found a faster way to get to lion and we're going to draw an arrow here but because we have a faster way we're not just getting rid of the number we're saying we're never going to go this way to get to lion if we want to get to lion quickly we are not going through to lose erase that arrow that's what the updating step is really all about okay and then again vichy is done we mark it as visited. 
well, we'd go to Marseille next and then keep on going and then we'd end up going to Nice or whatever and then keep going and et cetera, et cetera. Feel free to keep on going. I'm going to skip to what happens when we're in this position. So pretty much the same. I just did a couple extra steps. Now we're over here and we're at Lyle. And uh, so I just fast forwarded a bit. This is our current node. That's the wrong color, Jason. This is our current node. All right, we're comparing these two nodes. That's the only unvisited adjacent node. And we get 1300. We already have a way to get to Strasbourg in 1300. Remember the algorithm says, compare it. If it's strictly less than, update it. So technically the algorithm doesn't have us update this path. Now, if you were actually doing this, you might want to modify the up, 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 you might want to modify the algorithm and say, okay, we have two shortest paths, but if we're really strictly following the algorithm, we won't do anything here. Okay. So we're just going to be done with Lyle. Market is visited. Now the only unvisited thing that's left is Briançon, whatever that pronunciation is. And to get to Strasbourg, we'll add the 850 with the 400 and get to 1250, which again is faster. So we're going to get rid of that, get rid of that shortest path, and add a new path. And now every node, well, every node except for Strasbourg is visited. You could visit and mark it if you want. Technically, the algorithm has to do it. Visit, there's no, yeah, great. We're done. We have found the shortest path. Actually, we've not only found the shortest path between Bordeaux and Strasbourg, which again, that shortest path is this path. We've actually found the shortest path between Bordeaux and every city. So, oh, my cat's just unplugged. Nice. <laughs> The moral of the story is I need better cable management so that cats that are zooming around the house do not unplug my tablet. Anyway, but right, we have the shortest path between Bordeaux and any other city. And that's basically what this does. So very computationally expensive. There are other ways of doing this, but this is a way that will always work. Assuming we have, you know, assuming these two nodes are connected, it will always work. We'll always give you the shortest path which is great, it's very reliable. Now, of course, a lot of times what we're going to do is we're going to trade other things. Um, we're probably gonna want speed for giant graphs, and it's less important whether it's the 100% optimal, it's less important whether it always works. Again, that's a bit outside of the scope of this class, but there are things to think about when you're looking at these algorithms. That's pretty much what we've got. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Hope you had a little fun with this. I know it takes a long time, but it is cool to really see how it's working, right? And get an intuitive understanding of an algorithm, which I do think helps you program and implement these algorithms. Let me know if you have any questions and have a good rest of your day, rest of your night, rest of your morning, whatever it is. Bye-bye.